Insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 99. Hobbies and Activities. I am your host, Joseph Whalen, and my intelligent and creative co-host, Madison Whalen. Hi, everyone. How are you doing today, Maddie? I'm doing all right. So we are just about to break the century mark. Technically, this is our 100th episode. Yeah. Because we started at episode zero with our pilot. Um, but uh, from a numbering sequence standpoint... Episode 100 will be next week's episode, and we do have a special guest plan for that. So that should be exciting. <laughs> so this week, we are talking hobbies and activities. Um, have a good week this week? Yeah, pretty much. Um, Monday started out kind of stressful, mainly because I learned I had a test or a quiz every single day this week. So I was studying for all of them at once on Monday. And then as the week went by, the days kind of just got easier. That's good. That's good. It's always, you know, Mondays are always supposed to be the worst day of the week. And everything's supposed to get better after that. That's just the thing. Mondays actually haven't been the worst day for me. Yeah, you're lucky like that. Yeah. So this week we're talking hobbies and activities. Uh, we're going to talk about why teenagers should have hobbies. Uh, how kids should spend their free time and why it matters how they spend their free time. Then we'll talk a little bit about productive downtime and we'll examine some of the benefits of having hobbies. And I think you'll be surprised at some of the benefits of, of having hobbies because I know I was when I, when I did the research on it. And then finally, we'll talk about some of your hobbies and, and how you know they tend to help you de-stress and, and provide other benefits for you. All righty. Before we do that, though, I would invite folks to subscribe to the podcast. You can get the video versions of our podcast listed as Insights into Things, and that covers all of the show, all the network's podcasts. Or you can get just the audio versions of this podcast looking for Insights into Teens. We're available pretty much anywhere you can get podcasts these days. Apple, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, uh, iHeartRadio, Amazon, and so forth. I would also invite folks to reach out to us and give us your feedback. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. On Twitter, we are at insights underscore things. On Facebook, you can get us at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. We are on Instagram at insights into things, or you can reach out directly through our website at www.insightsintothings.com. Are we ready to get started? Sure. All right, let's get started. So why teenagers should have hobbies. This comes from a different source that we haven't used in the past called EvolveTreatment.com. And they, they kind of talk in general terms here. They say on any given weekday during the school year, the average American teenager spends about eight and a half hours sleeping and about six and a half hours in school. So this leaves about nine hours of their waking time unaccounted for, which leaves us with an important question. What do our teenagers do during those nine hours? Before we get into some of the surveying information, because they do have a couple of surveys in here with, with details, let me ask you, what do you do with your free time when you're not doing work or sleeping or, you know, whatever else. What is, what is your primary focus in your free time? Uh, I guess my focus in my free time would be to kind of like de-stress from some of the work I might have had um, and come and like find ways to, you know, just 
kind of relax and chill. Um, okay. And, of course, those include some of my hobbies that calm me down. Um, and, yeah, for mo- whenever I'm not working, I'm either do- trying to work on something else when I'm not doing school or sleeping, I'm either working on something else that I want to work on, normally something creative, or I'm playing a game or watching YouTube. Okay. Interesting. So the following numbers that we're going to talk about were published by the Department of Health and Human Services and collected by the Bureau of Labor and Statistics in a 2017 survey. So they're a few years old. Uh, the data for hours spent in school comes from the National Centers for Education and Statistics. So what they look at here is how American teens spend their time. So as we said already, um, sleeping makes up a large part of that time, and that's roughly 8.6 hours. Uh, we talked about school. School takes up about 6.6 hours. So the next largest block is media and communication. So this is digesting media, um, social media, I assume. And that's about 2.3 hours of your free time. Do you think you spend 2.3 hours, you know, consuming media or being involved in uh, social media or anything like that with your friends? Not really. I don't actually have really any media platforms like any major social media platforms. I don't entirely socialize a lot on the internet. I do have friends that I text now and then, and I do have Kids Messenger where I'm able to talk to my friends and family. Uh, but other than that, I really don't communicate with people outside of um, school um, with media, with like social media and stuff. Okay. So the next thing they talk about is is non-specific activities. They label it as other activities. That's 1.7 hours. So that one's kind of vague. We'll leave that one alone. The next thing they talk about is leisure activities, 1.4 hours. Now, the way the survey asks these questions, it's it's unclear if leisure activities include watching media because I would I would include watching media as part of my leisure activities. Um what do you do personally for leisure activities? Um, probably watching um, YouTube videos or TV would be one. Um, drawing and doing and doing creative work would be another. And I'd also probably say gaming as well. So that's all leisure activity in your book when you think about it. Pretty much. See, when I think leisure activity, I, I think something that's that's more relaxing, you know, maybe, you know, just vegging out, taking a nap, reading a book, something like that, that I use for leisure activity. But it's, you know, it's subjective depending on, on what you do to relax. Yeah. So the next thing they talk about is eating and drinking, which we all do. Um, what I find interesting here is it's only about an hour. So you're... What the survey suggests is that teens are consuming three meals a day, plus any snacks, in in just an hour a day. Wow. Um, I mean, I just think of, like, family dinners, and our family dinners are usually 20 minutes each, 30 minutes each, maybe. You know, probably another 15 or 20 minutes for lunch, and then however long breakfast is. So, I don't know, I, I guess I expected that number to be a little bit higher. How about grooming? How long, how much time do you take grooming? You know, bathing and brushing your hair, brushing your teeth and all that stuff. Um, well, I definitely say that I probably take longer to brush my teeth than most people, mainly due to my braces. Um, showering, I kind of shower, I think, a little longer. You kind of complain about that because, I don't know, I like how the water feels. Uh, brushing my hair, I'm relatively quick with that, as well as getting dressed and stuff. So, I, I mean, I don't, I don't particularly, like, put extra time into looking and cleaning my, like, I definitely put as much time as I need to into cleaning, and some of that I just needed to put extra time into for certain reasons, so... 
I'd say I take a decent amount of time grooming. Okay. Well, and, and they the survey says the average amount of time that teens take is about 0.9 hours or 54 minutes. Um, and I think based on what you described, that's fairly accurate for what you do. Uh, the next few, they, they go through pretty quick. One is playing sports. The other is working or volunteering. Um, doing homework, I think, was really a surprise here. They talk about doing homework takes up about 0.2 hours a day or 12 minutes a day. Um, now, there is a caveat to that that we'll talk about in a little bit, but how long do you typically take when you when you do your homework? Not 12 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I take at least an hour if I'm lucky. Like, I take... I take a decent amount of time with my homework. Yeah, well, and, and, you know, you're in a lot of advanced classes, too, so as a result, you tend to get a much higher workload, too. Yeah. So the last one they talk about here is religious activities, where they take about six minutes a day, and I'm going to go out on a limb here. I don't do it, but I'm assuming it's praying before you go to bed or something like that. Yeah. So the survey included data collected from all American adolescents, including teens not enrolled in high school and teens already in college. However, the American teens enrolled in high school, uh, for the American teens enrolled in high school, the average time spent doing homework comes closer to an hour, uh, about 54 minutes. Is that a little bit more accurate for what you spend? Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's what it was, is that because of the diversity of of the teens that were polled, it kind of brought that average down a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, so one of the things that they talk about here is that if our adolescents spend about eight and a half hours of sleep, about seven and a half hours on school related activities and an hour eating, what do they do for the remaining time of the day? And by the numbers, they spend about 60% or about five hours of that time doing things that we as adults would probably consider non-productive, such as using media or television, grooming, or other activities. Uh, quick thing. Sure. Why, why would grooming be considered unproductive? I, I don't know, and I kind of disagree with that, but because grooming is such a small percentage of that time, I'm, I'm not going to really call that one out. Um, they say, granted, teenagers need downtime, just like we all do, uh, when we're basically doing nothing but relaxing and recharging, but do teens need five hours a day of downtime? Now, I'm going to put that question directly to you. Do you think teens need five hours of downtime a day? Well, it depends on the teen, really. It depends, like, the situation when, like, it depends on their mental situation, basically. Some teens can be extremely stressed from school, home, sleep, anything like that, and have a specific mental issue where they probably need at least five hours of downtime to calm down and just, you know, de-stress. And yeah, not every teen goes, every teen does have something that stresses them out. But not every teen's going to need five hours of relaxation um, to keep them calm. But some teens do. So it's really depend- it really just depends on the mental state of the teen if we're thinking about it. And I, I would agree with that. I think it's kind of a subjective call. Um, just as much as I think that downtime activity is a subjective call. Because some of the stuff that you do, um, like watching videos. You know, you watch YouTube videos which themselves are entertaining but a lot of times they have an educational aspect where you're learning something from it. Um, you may, you enjoy, you list it, you know, drawing. Well, drawing is something that is relaxing to you, but it also hones your artistic skills too. So it's not non-productive. Yeah. Um, so it is kind of subjective. Yeah. If you're sitting around playing video games for five hours a day, you know, you're playing call of duty or something like that, and you're not doing anything productive at that time. That's probably the angle they're looking at here, but I don't think that's always the case. Yeah. So let's take a quick break and we'll come back and we'll talk about how kids spend their free time and why it matters how they spend that free time. For over seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild 
in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Sith Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. Welcome back. We are talking hobbies and activities today. And we're going to talk about how kids spend their free time and why that matters. For the sake of this discussion here, we'll consider that the extracurricular activities, including school clubs, uh, school and non-school sports, and individual pursuits like reading, writing, and playing music are hobbies. Think of a hobby as anything a teenager does outside of school hours that's not compulsory and they don't earn money doing. Viewed through that lens, research shows adolescents with hobbies are less likely to engage in high-risk behaviors compared to adolescents with hobbies. Now, let me just leave that one right there and ask, do you think that that's an accurate assessment based on your experience? I mean, like you said before, like, without me really realizing it, um, I learned through some of my hobbies, and I learned valuable skills, I enhanced those skills, and yeah, I definitely think hobbies are very beneficial. Also, there's also the mental aspect of it, keeping kids somewhat sane, making them happy, and... Somewhat sane, I like that. <laughs> yeah, so... I definitely think that hobbies are very beneficial and in stopping teens from doing risky from doing risky behaviors because they are they're normally learning through their hobbies and they have and they're getting positive emotions from it which stop them from seeking other things that they feel might help them. And the data that this uh, study cites would seem to agree with you. So they cite data from a wide range of what they call meta-analysis. So they're pulling from multiple different sources that didn't specifically study this effect. So they're kind of reading into this effect kind of as a secondary uh, notion. Okay. So they looked at how teens spend their time, and it shows that teens who don't spend any time at all doing extracurricular activities are 57% more likely to drop out of high school. Mm -hmm. They are 49% more likely to use drugs during their high school years. They're 37% more likely to become teen parents during their high school years. They are 35% more likely to smoke cigarettes during their high school years. And finally, they are 27% more likely to get arrested during their high school years. So, of those things, what are you the most uh, likely to, to have happen to you? Um, the answer is none of those, I, right? Yeah, I wouldn't say e <laughs> I wouldn't say any of them because I don't feel like I'd ever like do something to get arrested. I don't feel like I'd ever want to drop out of high school. I would definitely not want to use drugs or alcohol. Um, I probably wouldn't become a teen parent because I'm very against do that stuff, um, and I probably wouldn't smoke. Right. So, but I think the whole point is what this uh, study suggests is that statistically speaking, when you don't have that constructive hobby, and I think, you know, if we look at how they label the hobbies here with uh, school clubs, sports, and, and reading, writing, and playing music, if those are hobbies, they're probably looking at those as constructive hobbies in this case here. Mm -hmm. And and the study suggested those constructive hobbies help to guide teens along what uh, parents would think is the right path, I guess. Mm. So let's talk productive downtime. 
So hobbies give teenagers a chance to meet new people, discover passions, develop skills outside of school, and do something that all kids and teens are part of kids should do to have fun. Do you agree with that statement? Um, yeah, I definitely say that certain hobbies would definitely give you the chance to meet new people. Like, take for instance, the fact that I'm in band. Well, now that we're kind of virtual, I've actually gotten to know a lot of the kids who play the same instrument as me, and it's like one of the few interactions um, that I actually have during the week. Um, as well as discovering new passions, yeah, um, I didn't, I wasn't always in, I don't think I, like, originally started out as a musician, but when I started in fourth grade, when I got the chance, I found out I really did like playing the trumpet. Yeah. Um, develop skills outside of school, yeah, I've developed my art skill more outside of school, um, And to have fun, I have fun with my hobbies. So, yeah, I definitely agree with that statement. Okay. They say two of the most important things that happen during the teen years are identity formation and differentiation. Now, they go on to explain these. What do they, how do they classify identity formation? So, identity formation is exactly what it sounds like. It's the process of becoming an an individual with an entire set of personal wants, needs, skills, and preferences. And how's differentiation? Different, uh, differentiation is part of identity formation, but differentiation is special. It's the formation of an identity outside and apart of parents and fa- from parents and family. Right. And they talk about hobbies as a great way for teens to form an identity outside of their family. Now, we've got a pretty... I would say pretty tight family environment here. Mm -hmm. Um, A lot of that is just because we're very naturally, you know, tight as a family. But obviously nowadays with the pandemic and everything, we don't get out to interact with others as much as, as we used to. Yeah. Um, But it's important to have that interaction outside of the family too, because if you're just, Interacting with the family, you you wind up being a little too sheltered there. Yeah. Um, They say hobbies take place after school hours can be even better for teens. They also give teenagers a chance to forge their own paths outside the watchful eye of parents and teachers. Uh, Like, for instance, one of the hobbies that I used to have was, uh, you know, my gaming group. You know, we would, I'd go out once a week to a local gaming store and Sam and I would, go do stuff like that. And we had our time and you and mommy had your time and it sort of worked out and we each got the, our chance to recharge. Mm -hmm. You and mommy have some of the activities that you guys do together. So it's not completely divorcing from the family, but it's moving off into different segments there. That's a little bit more, I guess in this case, gender appropriate with some of the things that you and mommy do with, you know, the pink tent and stuff like that. We can do it. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, so they say that's a new law of the land, both common law dating back centuries, um, referring to teachers, how teachers become an extension of the family Mm -hmm. that, you know, it's common law dating back centuries and the U S Supreme court, uh, held that school officials can act in loco parentis or the, in place of the parents, so when you interact with your teachers, your teachers are kind of parents by proxy there. And what that really means is that they're responsible for certain aspects of your development. Um, they're responsible for your safety, your well-being. Um, they're responsible for making sure that you have an education. So hobbies that occur in school with teachers really aren't that extension of the family, mm-hmm. you know, outside of the family they're talking about. Yeah. But they talk about things like sports and band and how they're different. You know, it's common knowledge figures like sports coaches and band directors, while they're coaching or directing band, are neither teachers nor parents. So you tend to have a little bit different relationship with that type of interaction. Mm -hmm. Uh, My band director when I was in high school, or my choir director when I was in high school, was not a teacher. Um, in the traditional sense, Mm -hmm. he was 
very down to earth, very approachable, um, did not portray himself as an authority figure. And as a result, we related to him much more. And because we related to him more, we would confide in him things that we wouldn't say to, to teachers under normal circumstances. So having that kind of relationship in someone who's older and more mature that can provide guidance, especially in a controlled environment, is very helpful. They help teens learn to grow in new and different ways under a unique set of rules and norms. And while teaching them skills, they don't learn at home or in class. In addition to facilitating a basic psycholo- the basic psychological needs, Hobbies benefit teens on many levels, which we'll talk about in our next segment. But do you have or have you had that kind of uh, interaction with an art teacher or uh, a band director or someone like that where you feel comfortable, you know, approaching them with things that you wouldn't talk to a regular teacher about? Yeah, actually. Uh, thinking about the years I've been in band, um, the band directors I knew, um, they definitely seemed a lot more approachable than most of the teachers. Um, it, I think it, it felt as, it felt as though they kind of, they definitely did, it was kind of similar to you. They didn't put too much authority down, which meant, which made them more approachable. And yeah, I would say that with my current band director now, I'm able to approach him easily. And it isn't, and I'm not really like. Well. (laughs) Well, and I get it. And, and I think part of that is the fact that what you're doing, what you're engaging in is, is hobby type activities. Um, and, and you're getting the benefit of the hobbies of those activities and the teachers aren't, aren't, you know, you're graded on your, on your efforts in their class, but you're being graded on a hobby really. Yeah. So it's a very different type of authoritative dynamic when it comes to something like that. Yeah. And it allows it to be probably a little bit more relaxed, um, not nearly as much pressure, uh, and and that you kind of need that to help facilitate the skills involved in learning um, a talent related hobby like band or the skills needed for sports or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, they're more motivational than authoritative. You know, their job is to teach you how to play the instrument, but they're there to try to motivate you because of the nature of the skill itself. It's not just a matter of inducing book knowledge in you. Mm -hmm. Um, And the same thing goes with sports. You know, anybody can swing a bat, but to be able to have the discipline and the skill to follow through with everything else that happens when you're not stepping up to the plate, there's a level of discipline that you have to have, self-discipline you have to have, in order to be a, a skilled athlete that you have to do outside of, you know, the, the times where you're playing the game. Mm-hmm. So let's take another break. And when we come back, we'll talk about what some of the benefits of hobbies are for teens. Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Our husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. We'll look at the interesting and obscure entertainment news of the week. We'll talk about theme park and pop culture news. We'll give you the latest and greatest on pop culture conventions. We'll give you a deep dive into Disney, Star Wars, and much more. Check out our video episodes at youtube.com backslash insights into things. Our audio episodes at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com or check us out on the web at insightsintothings.com. (laughs) 
Welcome back to our Hobbies and Activities episode today, episode 99. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the benefits of hobbies. So we touched on the first one so far, and that was discovering passions. A teenager might not know they love art, sports, computer coding, cooking, or other things until they give it a shot. How did you discover some of the passions that you have in your hobbies? Like, for instance, artwork. Let's talk about that specifically. Well, I'm going to specifically talk about how I got into digital artwork. So you guys had gotten me a tablet when I was in sixth grade. And with that tablet, you gave me a few digital art apps. Um, and when I first tried them out, I will be honest... Um, I was having fun, but it didn't seem like it was a uh, fit for me. But when uh, quarantine started, um, I decided to go back. And when I started seeing other artists do digital art, I decided to go back and give it a try. I ended up liking it so much that we got, um, I got a uh, stand for it, and I got a drawing glove and a new pencil that I. Um, that I was able to draw with, and I have, and I definitely see my skill, and I've improved a lot, and I really enjoy it, and I think I actually enjoy it more than I, um, enjoy actually drawing on paper. Yeah, and you are very good. In fact, you just did a, uh, a project that I commissioned from you, uh, for our D&D group that we're going to be doing a new adventure for, so you did a poster for me, which I appreciate. No problem. The next thing they talk about is developing skills. Teens can make great leaps forward when they focus on something they choose and spend time doing it on their terms. Now, that's clearly something that you learned or something that occurred with your artwork. Is there another uh, example that you can give us about how you developed your skills beyond what you thought you had? Probably banned. Um, from... I remember, like, just last year, um, they, I remember one song we were playing, and we actually are playing it again, which is called Marches of the Armed Forces, <coughs> um, and I realized that, I remember that I had trouble hitting the one, um, high note, the high C, um, and, na and, um, now, after a few more months, um, I'm able to hit a high G at this point. So I definitely improved on hitting higher notes and I've definitely gotten better with my trumpet, especially after everything being adjusted with my mouth. Yeah. And that was, I mean, that was a challenge for you because, and, and you're still going through it with, you know, different trips to the orthodontist and the different levels of discomfort that you're running into and the changes with the braces and everything. So it's almost like, I don't know, like every six months you have to learn how to play the trumpet all over again with the changes. Yeah. So that's that's actually quite a testament to your ability to adapt to it. So number three is meet new people. Now, granted, under normal circumstances, this probably applies. They talk about playing sports, learning a musical instrument, or joining a club gets kids out there meeting people they wouldn't ordinarily meet. Now, assuming we weren't under quarantine, do you think that's something that would apply as well? I mean, yeah, if I actually joined clubs when I when I was under normal circumstances. I really only had band because I wanted to try and join a club, but I kind of was late in the ones I wanted to join, and I really had no idea how to join them. Um, so I'm, but I have met people, uh, like I said before, I've met people through band and now in our lessons, I kind of get that extra interaction with them and you know, it's kind of nice. Nice. Very nice. So building self-esteem, this is something that is a challenge for all teens. Uh, and I think a lot of people in general, unless you're incredibly self-confident, they say when a teenager succeeds at something related to their hobby, such as learning a new song, scoring a goal, or writing a poem, it builds their confidence, their sense of self-worth, and increases their overall mental and emotional well-being. Is that something that you've had, uh, an experience that you've had from your hobbies? 
I definitely would say, with both band and art, I've definitely improving over time and finally being able to accomplish um a particular goal is was very satisfying. Um uh, one in particular was when I had to play the high G in our scale. I had first had some trouble playing the high F and then I was able and then when I was able to finally hit the high G, it was a big it was a big accomplishment. And that kind of leads us into the next point here is that a sense of achievement. Uh, this is like self-esteem, but it's not the same thing. Self-esteem is general. This is specific. A teenager who takes a liking to carpentry, for instance, might build a table, a chair, a deck, or even a clubhouse, and then step back and say, wow, I did that. That's a special feeling everyone should experience, especially teens. What have you had from your hobbies that has has given you that sense of achievement that you can go back and look at after the fact and and enjoy? Probably when I had finished your poster, um, it had taken me. Um, I had stepped pretty far out of my comfort zone with that, seeing as I was drawing a completely new species in a completely different style. And it was definite. and when I was finally done with the shading, the background, and the coloring, and I finally stepped back to look at it all, I'm like, wow, I really impressed myself. Yeah. Managing time. Participating in hobbies teaches teens how to use their time wisely. Instead of spending all afternoon on the couch, they learn to allocate time toward their hobbies because they want to, not because they have to. They find out how to fit their hobby time in with homework, family commitments, and social time, and that's not always easy. Have you found that that your hobbies have allowed you to manage your time better? I would say so. Um, Like... I have somewhat of a time stamp on when, like, like I've kind of gotten a stamp in my mind at what time I'm done with schoolwork and then I go and do my hobbies. Um, I have a certain point where I would play Sims, a certain point where I'd go work on something creative, and a certain point where I'd go and um, watch videos. So... Yeah, I definitely say that it kind of helped me manage my time. So Okay. They say the teams help find out who you are. Most adults know developing an identity takes trial and error. You try one thing, you don't like it, so you try another. The teenage years are the perfect time to start this process. Do hobbies help you do that? Do they help you define who you are as a person or discover who you are as a person? I'd say so. Um, like I said um, before with when I finally learned how to do digital art, um, once I actually got the hang of it and started perfecting my skill, it became it became part of my identity. Um, it became one of my major platforms for drawing and it started making and it's kind of strange to say, but it started getting me into thinking more creatively about characters I wanted to create, how I wanted to draw them and stuff like that. Nice. Very nice. Hobbies help you regulate emotions. Developing a skill takes time and patience. That means learning how to deal with emotions like anger and frustration. Time devoted to a hobby inevitably means managing the ups and downs one encounters along the way. This skill translates directly into almost every aspect of adult life. And I can say learning sports is a great way to go through this because there are times that I went through frustrations because I couldn't physically do something until I could train my body to, you know, spike a volleyball or, you know, catch a football or whatever it was. You go through that type of thing. Do you find that the hobbies that you enjoy now help you go through those emotional cycles and manage your emotions? I mean, yeah, back to playing the trumpet. Like I said, whenever I kind of messed up or couldn't hit the note, I was frustrated and I'd get really upset. 
and like I'd have to try and calm myself down before I could continue. But continuing to try and hit that note got me to eventually hitting it. So yeah, I definitely say that regulating my emotions was something that happened with my hobbies. And that experience itself feeds right into the next benefit, and that's handling adversity. While pursuing hobbies, things don't always go perfectly. In sports, for instance, losing happens. Teenagers who understand how to rise above the bad and look to where the good get a head start on life. As adults know, adversity happens. The sooner an individual learns to deal with it, the better. What of your hobbies have, you know, you just gave one experience with band, but give me another experience where your hobbies have helped you learn to deal with adversity or come overcome obstacles. Um, probably when I didn't exactly have any creative fuel. Like this kind of feeds into when I was playing The Sims. Sometimes I don't always think of a building I want to create, and I can't always think of a story. And um, when that happens, I have to find a way to kind of get my creative, my creativity back on track by inspire, by trying to inspire myself. And even if I can't, I'm just like, okay, just walk away and do some, and do something else. And because I don't want to get frustrated with it. Yeah. And I, and I find the same thing too. You know, it's the same philosophy I have is if I'm staring at something for too long and I can't overcome it if i can't figure out a problem or if i'm writing a story and i and i I just get writer's block and i can't get past it i kind of just have to walk away from that and and you know you learn how to deal with those things Mm -hmm. the last thing they talk about here is learning the value of hard work while we don't necessarily agree that all good things in life come only from hard work we do agree that without hard work, it's tough to accomplish most things of significant value. When a teen chooses a hobby, they'll have to spend time working at it in order to become proficient. And if the hobby is a sport or a fine art, they're lucky they have they get to spend a lifetime practicing their craft. Um, and in the teenage years, this type of effort lays the foundation for achievement throughout adulthood. And I, I agree with this 100% because one of the things that I learned through some of my hobbies early on is if you don't work hard at it, like, like my hobby is computers. You know, I happen to work in the computer field. I'm very lucky in that I get to do the kind of work that to me is a hobby and a recreation. Mm-hmm. But if I don't stay up on top of that, technology is a great example because it changes so quickly and it updates and and old technology becomes obsolete so quickly now that it's not something like reading where you learn it once and then you always have that skill. It's something that you need to stay on top of and it's a challenge staying on top of it. And it's that challenge of constantly learning and learning new things and figuring out what I need to learn because there's, you know, not being in a formal learning setting, there's no one to set an agenda or a criteria for me. I have to figure out what it is on my own and figuring that out is part of the enjoyment and going down whatever path I need to go down. Is it security this week? Is it networking this week? Is it hardware? Whatever it is, I get to set that agenda myself, but I have to figure out what it is. Mm-hmm. Has your Have your hobbies taught you the value of hard work that you can take with you moving through life? I mean, yeah, with both my trumpet and when I draw, I and even with Sims, I've learned the value of hard work. Uh, my trumpet specifically, I, of course, have had to try over and over to perfect that skill, and I've definitely gotten way better than where I was, what, four years ago? Um, And with my art, when I look back at some of the first digital art drawings I've made and when I sometimes redo them, um, I realize how much I've improved. And when I'm on a specific project, like the project you gave me, it took me a while because it was something I wasn't entirely used to. I had to try and figure out ways. And I've learned a lot of new ways to help me like 
finding up reference images um, and um, ways on how to uh, create colors and get colors and layering and everything like that. So I've definitely learned through the hard work and I've got and I've gotten better with handling all the hard work. Yeah. So, you know, it sounds like uh, a lot of, you know, we went through 10 benefits here from hobbies and it sounds like a lot of these are, are things that you've experienced yourself in your hobbies. Mm -hmm. So we've talked a, a, a good deal about some of the hobbies that you have, uh, art being one of them. What other hobbies do you have that you enjoy at this time? Well, one of them would be writing or creating stories because most of the time I don't entirely write down all my stories because I have, I just have a lot to say and a lot of that normally comes out in my self monologues. But writing, I like creating stories. I like creating characters, their stories, and I like just coming up with new stories or coming up with, okay, this, um, so this is what happened in a story. How did it happen? Stuff like that. So you also have a tendency of combining hobbies too. So for instance, you enjoy drawing and artwork and you enjoy storytelling. And you've in the past combined those two into doing comics. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about the type of comics that you've done and, and where you think you're going to go with something like, like comics. Well, of course I've, I first started out mainly um, with drawing Spongebob comics, um, and I actually, and with that, I'm kind of taking comics into a new level. Um, with an app I have called Gasha Club, I'm able to create characters I like, and I'm able to make have them talk and play out stories and the same thing goes with the sims i create sims i can play out stories with them um and with comics i've started i've actually started to go back with some of my old characters and redraw for my comics and redraw them in a new style um change up their looks and give them a bit more personality because i come up with stories when i make the characters like what are they wearing? What does that have to do with their personality? What is their story? That kind of thing. Yeah. Well, and you've even taken that to a level above and beyond static images on a page. You've actually started making your own movies with these characters as well. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about what you're doing with your movies. So I have a series that I'm planning on making called The Six X's. Um, I think I've mentioned it on this channel a couple of times, and um, I'm basically taking images from Gotcha Club and putting them in an editing software where I'm able to make them as a movie with transitions, sound effects, and um, just just making them into a full-length movie somewhat. Um, and so far, I've come up I know how the story goes, I know all the characters, and I'm planning on making a series, basically, with them. Very cool. So that's that's really taking things through multiple um, mediums of hobbies and, and ultimately making movies out of them, which is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. So besides those things, what other hobbies do you have? Well, one of them is podcasting. Of course. <laughs> I mean, we've been doing this for how many years now? Two? Um, just finished. We're into our third year now, yeah. We're into our third year. We've been doing this for a pretty long time, and I've um, contributed, and I've tried to um, help with coming up with subjects and ideas for the, pod for the future podcasts. And yeah, podcasting has now become a hobby and is somewhat a career now. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing, like moving on from, uh, episode 100 on, I think you're probably going to take on a, a larger role in contributing to what we talk about and writing some of the scripts and, and you're going to, you're going to take on a bigger role at this point, moving through to the next 100 episodes we're going to be moving into. Mm -hmm. So. Of, of what we talked about here, 
These all seem like constructive hobbies to me. Would you agree? Mm-hmm. Do you have any non-constructive hobbies that you enjoy that you just you use to veg with, just to relax, clear your mind, not worry about anything? What do you have that's a non-constructive hobby? Probably watching YouTube videos and playing games. Okay, tell us a little bit about that. Watching YouTube videos, I really just watch them to enjoy myself. There are some specific hobbies that I do. There are some specific things that I do. Sometimes I listen to music. Sometimes I just watch videos that make me happy and or make me laugh. And sometimes I just use it as background noise when I'm working on something else. Okay. And when you play games, what do you play? Uh, my main game, of course, is The Sims, which, I mean, it actually might be considered constructive, literally, when I construct <laughs> houses and Sims. So, um... But yeah, I use that as somewhat of a guilty pleasure. Um, and yeah, that can be constructive sometimes. Um, other times I've played hold, uh, Call of Duty with you. And, right. um, that mainly happens when I've had a tough day and I need to de stress and, you know, <laughs> shooting things help. Shooting pixels helps. Shooting pixels helps. So, you know, I, I look back at, at all these hobbies of yours that we talked about and I, I really don't think that there's a lot of, wasted time i think the time that you spend you spend honing skills or you know medicinally uh helping your mentality and your ability to relax there aren't any aside from you know shooting pixels i don't really think there are any hobbies that you have that that really aren't constructive and i think i think a lot of teens and more importantly i think a lot of parents would see that in their teens if they dug a little bit deeper from the surface. Yeah, sitting and, you know, looking over at your your kid who's got their face buried in their phone watching videos all the time kind of seems like it's not constructive. But, you know, sometimes you might want to ask what they're watching and try watching it too and seeing what kind of value they're getting out of it other than just entertainment. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think the most important thing probably to take away from this discussion today is that our hobbies all have different values to us, you know, whether it's a relaxation aspect, an educational aspect, an inspirational aspect. Um, I think it's important to look at hobbies with an open mind. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you realize that you, you get more out of the hobbies than you probably realize you do. So we're going to take a quick break and come back and give you your closing remarks and your shout outs. All righty. Go for your closing remarks. Alrighty, so to everyone out there, parents, teens, whoever you are, um, just know that hobbies, a lot of hobbies are beneficial. And something that could be considered unproductive to someone could be considered helpful or, um, in many cases, productive to someone else. So... Hobbies are subjective, and it really just depends on what value you get from your hobbies. Yeah, I I think you need to have an open mind. And, uh, you know, before you criticize your teen's hobby or think that it's a a waste of time, get to understand it and realize the value that they they take out of it. Mm -hmm. Because I think if, if you understand better the value that they take out of it, you may appreciate the hobby a little bit more. Yep. So that was all we had for today. Before we go, I do want to encourage folks to uh, subscribe to the podcast. You can get text versions of the podcast as Insights into Teens, uh, video versions of the podcast. You can look for Insights into Things. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Amazon, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, I would also uh, invite folks to reach out to us. Give us your feedback. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. Uh, you can hit us on Twitter at insights underscore things. You can get high res versions of our videos on YouTube at youtube.com slash insights into things. We do stream or try to stream six days a week when I'm not having technical difficulties like I was again this week. Uh, we stream on Twitch at twitch.tv slash insights into things. If you are an Amazon prime subscriber, uh, you do have a Twitch prime monthly subscription for free. If you threw that our way, we would greatly appreciate it. It helps us uh, keep the lights on. Uh, You can get all your versions of the podcast 
at podcast.insightsintoteens.com. You can get us on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. You can get us on Instagram at insights into things or all the links to all those sites to our website at www.insightsintothings.com and you. And don't forget to check out our other two podcasts, Insights in the Entertainment, hosted by you and Mommy, and it's Antenna Tomorrow, our monthly podcast, hosted by you and my brother Sam. Nice. And that's it. Another one in the books. Bye, everyone. Bye.